Up until now, in Unit 3, when we were looking at interactive uh, text from the users, I've always sort of assumed that the user is going to play nicely. They're going to give me the information that I want. Uh, but that might be bothering some of you. Let me give you an example here. We, some of you have seen this gingerbread story. We used it in other videos here in this Helpful Hints area. And so right here it says, you know, would you like this story to take place in the country, the city, or the beach? And the issue is, you know, we've assumed so far that the user is actually going to put in the word, one of those three words, country or city or beach. And the, and the problem is, what do we do if they don't? Well, right now we assume they do and we move forward with the program and it's, and it's really potential, there, there's, there's great potential that bad things are going to happen if they you know, said, well, I want it to take place in a castle. Or, or maybe they're just, you know, not a very good speller or something, and they say, I want it to take place in a, in a city, C-I-T-E. Right? So the issue is, what can we do to actually validate that the user put in good information here? Well, so far I've ignored that. I've, I've avoided answering that question, mainly because the answer is kind of ugly and, and not very elegant. But at the same time, you and or your students are going to want to be able to validate that those numbers and make sure that they're legitimate, excuse me, those inputs and make sure that they're valid. So let's look at how we could do this. So I'm going to go back to the stage and I'm going to go back right into the, the, the point where we ask that question about city and country and at the beach. So I better stop it too. So it's asking me right now, would you like this story to take place in the city, the country, or the beach? And I set location to that answer. Well, the issue is we'd like to be able to check right here before I move on, did they give me uh, the, the right answer? Did they give me one of those three possibilities? Um, and so there's a couple of ways of doing this, but the, the, I think that the, the it's, it's again, it's not clean, it's not elegant, but maybe one of the easiest ones to look at overall is what in computer science we call a loop and a half. Uh, it's a situation where you sort of ask a question potentially twice. What I'm going to do right now is to decide that I want to do something again if they gave me a bad answer. And so the idea is, you know, if I get here and the location they gave me is, is not what I'm looking for, then I want to keep asking them over and over and over again until they give me what I'm looking for. So the first thing I have to say is, well, what is I'm looking for? Well, I'm looking for location to be city or country or beach. So I'm going to come into operators and I'm going to take two ors and I'm going to put them together here. So I now have three holes. I want to know if something is true or something else or something else. And what I'm going to say is I want to know is the location that they gave me equal to, oops, equal to city, okay? Um, and let me duplicate that. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna duplicate it and kind of come back around to this. Oops, I don't need to duplicate that. So now I have this all together. I say if the location is city or the location is country, or the location is, uh, what was the third possibility? The beach, right? I want to repeat what's in here until it is one of those things. Well, if they gave me city or country or beach to begin with, then this statement is already true. It already is one of those things, and so we'll skip it. But if it's not, then it's going to come into this mouth. And so I'm going to duplicate this and put it in. And I'm going to actually add one more thing. So at this point, if I get into this mouth here, I'm in here because they didn't give me a right answer. So what I'm going to do is to have it say, change this a little bit. That isn't a choice. Try again. Would you like this story to take place in the city or country or beach? OK, so let's try this. I'm going to run it. Takes a little bit, takes five seconds to, to open up. Would you like this to take place in the city, the country, or the beach? Uh, if I say city, it goes right on and asks about boy or girl. But let me start over again, and let's this time assume that I give it something that's not one of those three things. Let's say that I say, I want it to take place in a castle. It says, that isn't a choice, try again. Would you like this to take place in the, oops, it didn't make enough room for me, so I might have to give a, a, a different set of prompts here. Uh, if this were a sprite, I would, have, I would have used a say block that said, say, that isn't a right choice, try again. 
And after it said that for two or three seconds, then I would have prompted for the question. But this person used the story, uh, so we have to kind of, or, or used the stage to ask that, but that's okay. Now if I say uh, beach, it moves on, right? So it kept repeating this until it got an answer that it was looking for. And so that's again this idea of, uh, again, for whatever reason in computer science we call it a loop and a half. We have one set of questions outside of the loop. We check to see, did I get the answer I wanted? If so, move on. But if not, keep doing this over and over and over again until you finally get one of those three choices. And so that's how you can validate your, your solutions with a loop and a half. And you could do the same thing here for gender. Put in a repeat until you get gender equals boy or gender equal girl. Repeat here for color. Repeat until color equals red or color equals green or color equals blue. Notice you do have to keep saying location equals city, location equals country, location equals beach, right? You have to, you have to say location equals each time, but it does work for you and allow you to, to do some error checking.